What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're doing the O-line positional preview for the New York Giants back with another edition for the positional previews and yeah so we're doing O-line we're going to be talking about the tackles we're going to be talking about the guards we're going to be talking about the centers all the non-sexy stuff we're going to be talking about because I know you guys want to hear about the cornerbacks you guys want to hear about the running backs you guys want to hear about the wide receivers all that stuff uh, but today, this is for the guys that are interested in the O-line. And this might not be as viewed as all these uh, all these other positions because really nobody really cares sometimes. Uh, a lot of people don't really care about the O-line. But I happen to love the O-line. So let's go ahead and talk about that. We're going to start first with the tackle position. We've got Nate Solder, free agent out of New England. Honestly, I'm I'm so excited for Nate Solder. I just hope nothing bad happens, like he gets hurt or whatever, and then we wind up never using him. I just hope that's not the case. But as of right now, I think he has a, a decent history with his injuries. I think he's been injured before, but um, I mean, I'm very excited about Nate Solder. I can't wait to see what he's going to put out on the field. Finally, we have a franchise left tackle. He is the highest paid tackle in the NFL right now. And I, I'm just so excited. I think it's well-deserved. I'm so excited for what he's going to bring to the table. Finally, we segue into Eric Flowers. He moves to right tackle. Sure, he's not very happy about that. You know, he didn't show up for voluntary, um, what was it, voluntary minicamp uh, just a few weeks ago. He didn't show up for that. He was like the only player that didn't show up for that. Um, so, I mean, hopefully he's all okay with it. I know the Giants have been talking about trading him. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I heard that they could even get a sixth round pick for him. So, honestly, if it's a sixth round pick, just don't trade him at all. Where he's still going to be of use. I mean, he is better than these other backup tackles out there. So, getting a sixth round pick for him won't be much of an improvement to the team. And it's just overall a dumb decision. I know a lot of people have their feelings about Eric Flowers. They just want to get rid of him. But it's not the smart move, not yet, because we're not going to get anything for him. And he's still somewhat decent. He's still a starter. I don't care what anybody says. He's better than any of the guys that I'm about to list. So, we go into that. We have Eric Flowers at right tackle. Hopefully, he does well. He's better as a run blocker, not a pass protector. So, hopefully, you know, with that right tackle spot, that will make him a little better. We now move on to Chad Wheeler, undrafted free agent out of USC. Last year, he was with the Giants. He was one of the guys that was the dark horse to make the roster. I think at first he made the practice squad, then he was signed on to the active roster. And I, you know, in the preseason he did okay, but in the regular season he just wasn't, he wasn't doing well whatsoever. He was not playing up to where he should be. I think he, he was playing at right tackle and left tackle, and he just, he got demolished everywhere. But he is, you know, I guess viable. He is a good backup, I guess. I mean, someone you can just throw in. For now when your players are fatigued I just think he's not the best swing tackle you could ask for but right now that seems like he our only option right now at swing tackle so Chad Wheeler there at swing tackle then we got this guy named Tyler Howell he's another guy I don't really know much about him I think he comes out of Massachusetts uh, but you know nothing nothing special about him Nick Beckton, this is a guy that moved, bounced around in the league. I think he's more, um, I think he was with the, the Bears more recently. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's with the Bears more recently. And I think he, he can make this roster. He's going to be in competition with Nick Gates, in my opinion. Nick Gates, a guy out of Wisconsin that was projected to be a fourth round, fifth round prospect, wound up going undrafted. And now the Giants picked him up. Honestly, I watched Nick Gates out of Wisconsin, and he is terrible. He is not a good tackle. We'll see what happens there. I heard they're working him out at guard. I, you know, hopefully that is better. He, you know, his sideline to sideline quickness is not good. That's what I've seen on film with Nick Gates. He was beaten all the time on the edge, and just by, you know, the speed rush, the typical speed rush. He's not good at that. So hopefully, you know, with the guard position, you have a tackle, you have a center right next to you. So... Um, you know, you don't, you don't need to worry about an edge rush. You don't need to worry about speed rushers. Just worry about protecting what's in front of you. So, you know, hopefully he works out the guard position. Right now, I'm listing him as a tackle. That, that's just because what he is right now. He is an offensive tackle. So, as far as Nick Gates goes, he's going to be in competition with Nick Beckton to make the roster as a, like a third tackle spot because we can't just go into the season with three tackles. I mean, if Nate Solder or Eric Flower goes down, then we just have Chad Wheeler and then we're forced to use one of these guards at tackle. So, I suggest we have four tackles. I know our options at tackle are not very good, but it is what it is right now. 
We now move on to the guard position. We have Will Hernandez, second round pick out of UTEP in this recent draft. Very excited about Will Hernandez. A phenomenal run blocker and a very underrated pass blocker. He's a mauler. He will throw you down. I mean, he's mean. He's aggressive. And, you know, overall, he's a, he's a fantastic player. Legit first round talent. It's a shame that he just came on the radar when the scouting combine happened, when he was starting to turn heads. I was watching the scouting combine. I barely knew who this Will Hernandez guy, I, like I knew his name, but I didn't know who he was. And watching him in the combine really impressed me. Then they put on some film of him just mauling people, throwing people to the ground. And I'm like, wow, this Will Hernandez guy. I mean, this guy has a highlight tape and he's a he's an old lineman. I mean, that's how good he is. I mean, he puts up, he puts up a good film. So... Uh, Will Hernandez is going to be starting at left left guard as far as we know you know usually usually the best guard is going to start at left guard so um, very excited about Will Hernandez very I mean we're solidifying this O-line and it, it's just looking fantastic right now the right side is still questionable but as of right now I mean that left side is looking very very nice so we now move on to John Jerry he's going to be in competition with Patrick Omame um, un, not undrafted free agent signing out of Jacksonville, ja the Jacksonville Jaguars, and Patrick Omame was a decent starter there with the Jaguars, and he's going to be in competition with John Jerry. John Jerry gets a lot of flack. He's not the best old lineman we've ever seen. He just finds a way to make the roster somehow. I mean, he he's not good. He's not bad. He's just there. So as far as we know, we just need Patrick Omame to do a little bit more than that and he will be the starter. I expect John Jerry to either be either be cut to save up a little money or he will just be used to uh, you know play a swing guard position and just work work out whenever you know our starters are tired or whatever injured or whatever it is. I think John Jerry will be some good depth. I just don't think John Jerry would want to be a backup. We'll see what happens. If he, he will be cut instead of just playing a backup role. That's just usually how it works with former starters. They don't, they don't want to be backup. So I mean, the team just winds up cutting him so he could, they could find better opportunities elsewhere. And uh, so we now move on to John Greco. longtime offensive lineman. More recently with the Saints. He was with us last year as well. And he actually played pretty well last year. He, I think he was part of that O-line. Uh, I think he was part of that O-line when we beat the Denver Broncos. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but... I mean, he he was doing pretty good with us, and I hopefully he makes his roster. He will be great depth for this roster. He was long time with the he was drafted by the Rams in the third round. Then he was with the Browns for a while, and then he was with the Saints for a year or two years, and then he came with us. So I'm very happy about John Greco. I think he's great depth. I don't think he's fantastic. Don't think he's bad either. I just think he's great depth, and if we need him, we will be able to use him. So. Now we move on to Ethan Cooper. He was an undrafted free agent by the Steelers, I believe in 2017. Correct me if I'm wrong, he played one year with the Steelers and now he's with us. So I don't really expect him to do much on this roster. So we move on to Chris John Sicoli. He is a uh, six round pick by the Seahawks in the 2015 draft. So we have somebody that was drafted. But as far as I know, he's not very good. And I don't think he's going to make this roster, if not the practice squad. We now move on to Chris Scott. He was a 2016 selection in the fifth round by the Pittsburgh Steelers. And again, here's another guy that just, um, he's 30 years old. He's been bouncing around in the league. I just don't expect him to make this roster. And it is what it is. I mean, he can't, he's too old to make a practice squad. So I don't expect him to make the roster. Then we move on to Malcolm Bunch. I don't know too much about him, but I know he was undrafted, an undrafted free agent by the Eagles. I forgot what year. I don't know if that's last year. And then we have John Jalapio, who I liked last year. He was with us last year, and you know he was a depth guard for us. He came in and played. I think he started a couple games as well for John Jerry. Correct me if I'm correct me if I'm wrong. Or John Hall, um, John Jalapio started for Justin Pugh in his absence, but he did pretty well. He's a good depth guard i expect him to make the practice squad finally we have a year where that we don't have adam geddes if you guys know who adam geddes is number 60 you know the guy with the dreads i mean he was with us for a, a, a long long time and just kept kept somewhat making this roster then making the practice squad then getting promoted to the active roster i think john jalapio is going to be that guy uh from now on so 
Uh, John Jalapeno should be making this practice squad, but I just don't think he'll make the active roster. Uh, now with our centers, let's move on to our centers. We have Brett Jones, who, I mean, the Giants could just completely put their trust in Brett Jones. We let go of Weston Richburg. Honestly, I guess it's bittersweet. I liked Weston Richburg. I really wanted him to work out. I really like our draft picks to stay with us. I want our draft picks to stay with us. Um, but, I mean, he wasn't the best center. I mean, he, he had a fantastic rookie year playing at guard. He had an even better year at center his first year at center a lot of people were saying he was a top five center in the whole nfl uh, when it comes to weston richburg and then his third year he completely fell off he was good in the pass block game but just wasn't good in the run block game we were struggling running up the middle and it was because of him brett jones comes in it just seems like weston richburg never left if not an even better weston richburg brett jones is coming in he's coming from the cfl he's been with us for i think this is his third year with us and I'm very excited about Brett Jones. Just hopefully he can stay healthy. I know he has problems with his health. So hopefully he can stay healthy. But we do have another guy, Evan Brown, another center. And um, hopefully he will be our backup center. Because I don't know if anybody else is experienced at center. So we'll see what happens there. So if you want to put a, put together a whole projected depth chart, I'll put together a whole projected depth chart right now. I'll start off with naming the whole old line from left to right. And then I will uh, list the depth the guys. Guys that are going to be just the, the bench O-linemen. So at left tackle, I've got Nate Solder. At left guard, I have Will Hernandez. At center, I have Brett Jones. At right guard, I have Patrick Omame. At right tackle, I have Eric Flowers. And now we go on to the depth guys. The guys are, you know, our backup guys, our swing tackle, our swing guards. Let's move on to uh, Jad Chad Wheeler. I have him making the roster. I have Nick Gates making the roster as a tackle slash guard. Some, we need the, those versatile guys because we need as much space as we can for other positions. And we can't really fit you know, a bunch of guys on the O-line. So we have to get guys that are versatile, guys that are able to jump around like Justin Pugh, like Weston Richburg. So, uh, yeah, so we've got... Uh, Nick Gates, that, that's it for the tackle position. We have four tackles. We also have four guards. Uh, so I already said Will Hernandez. So uh, John John Jerry and John Greco will be our, our backup guards. And then for centers, our Evan Brown will be our backup center. So in total, who we have, we have 10 players on the O-line. I think the Giants will probably stick with nine just because we have other positions to take care of but i have 10 just for my my projected depth chart so we have nate solder eric flowers chad wheeler and nick gates for the tackle position for the guard position we have will hernandez john jerry patrick omame and john greco and then for the centers we have brett jones and evan brown that is it for my o-line preview let me know what you guys think in the comment section below who do you guys like on this roster for the O-linemen? Who, who don't you like? I know a lot of you guys are going to talk about Eric Flowers. I understand that, but let's just be patient with him. You know, he's switching to a new position, a position that he should be better at. I don't think he's ever played this position before. I think he's been a left tackle his whole career, at even at Miami. So, like I said, you guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.